Yeah, right. Hi, Adam. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Fancy seeing you in a place like this. <laughs> well, we have been on tour, mate. Um, we've just pulled up at the Twelve Apostles, got yep. ourselves a nice brew. I think Bernie and Goog, that would be Stephen Larkham and Justin Harrison. We're having yenders, but we're uh, a bit early in the morning for a yender. Yeah, before 10 a.m. What so. coffee you drink? Just uh, just a straight latte, mate. Straight yeah. latte, right. yeah. I'm a bit fancy. I asked for a double piccolo at the service station on the way here. I got a bit of a weird look. Yeah. Um, I don't think they do that out in this, this part of the woods, neck of the woods. Well, it's 12 apostles. There's only six left. Um, pretty incredible, right? And this is the sort of the journey we're on at the yeah. moment, this gold-blooded tour. And it's, we were talking in the car on the way here about how it brings people together again. And uh, You and I, first roommate yep. on Wallaby yep. Tour. Yep. I just remember you having an Xbox. You were the oldest bloke in the team. You had an <laughs> Xbox. And you had all this tech and you used to have awesome room parties. And then I roomed with you as a, as a young buck. I thought it was unreal. And then you, uh, you've led me astray. And then here we are to this day, still mates and yeah. still talking about rugby and you even coached me at one point. You even dropped me. I did. You were the last yeah. coach to drop me. It was part of that. Do you know, that's right. The, yeah. You were assistant coach of Rebels. Yeah. And you dropped me against, I think it was the Sharks. Then I blew my calf out. Anyway, yeah. um, how's life, mate? How's the tour been? Good, really good. You know, we've been through uh, South Australia there and met some really lovely rugby people and, and connected with a, with a lot of kids and, and uh, coming through Mount Gambia yesterday and uh, visited another school there and, and, and went to a... Uh, a formation known as the sinkhole. Um, I did see the sinkhole. It was a big hole. A geological formation. Yeah, it was a big hole in the ground. Basically. Any of the kids? Any of these kids scared? Scared of you? Because you're the only bloke that I know that looks less scary wearing a beanie. You've, <laughs> you've got a really small head. <laughs> so I'm just trying. I'm looking at you well, now. Like you've got right. this tiny head with this beanie. Depends if I cut a couple of holes in it. Yeah. Nah, but look. In all, in all honesty, if I just talk, I know about we're on the tour, but you were regarded as one of the best hitters in the game right and probably off the field probably one of the nicest guys so do you have any, what, what are your memories of the sport what, what do you carry with you when we talk about being gold-blooded because it yeah. is part of our DNA and who we are as rugby fans but tell me a bit about you know what does the game mean for you at the moment and how important is it to get around and have this World Cup and visit those kids you're just talking about yeah I guess for me the memories of the game and, and, and being involved with the Wallabies over the years was, it was more not so much the games you remember obviously those are those are key points, and you, and you have a recollection recollection of that. But uh, it's really about you know the connections with your teammates and, and the staff that are involved as well. We just had our uh, reunion for the '99 team uh, 20 years ago. Was that cup there? That's yeah. This is this this is, this is the baby here. So um, you know that's uh, that's the cup we won back in '99, and just reconnecting with all those guys. And we, we don't we should do it more. We don't do it often enough. You know we, we've been doing it you know 10 and 20 year this year, but it's those little connections, you know, the travel time in the bus where you have a laugh or you're playing cards with guys on, on a train or a flight and, and it's all those little things that go around rugby that you remember. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what that's what bonds you together. And, and it still does to this day, right? Like, I mean, you go meet with your 99 crew or even someone you played one test with, you're yeah. always going to have that. But um, and, and tell me now, um, the sport to you and how important is this year, this World Cup? And I, know, I wouldn't say that... Everyone says that rugby's in a in a state of flux and it's, it's not as good as it used to be and things but we just I think the Wallabies can just create so much excitement when they do win and do you feel yeah. the same about yeah, that? Yeah I do I think um, you know if we if we do really well in this World Cup it'll, it'll bring the game right back to the forefront at that level it's different to what we're seeing you know at a community level at a grassroots level there's actually a thriving community there you know the number of kids as I said before that, that, that have come that, that are playing the game in in South Australia, and, and, and we'll see that all around the place. You know, clubs, club rugby's thriving in Brisbane and in Sydney. It's really good to see at that level. Yeah, right. So, um, what brings us to the next stop? I think we just got to continue to keep motoring through and, and see how we go. But can I ask one question? Why did you drop me in, in that last Super Rugby game when you were assistant coach of the Rebels? Because I actually was starting and playing all right. Or oh, was it someone else that did it? Were you backing uh, it? Well. I don't know, do you want the real reason? Or the yeah, well, no, we're on record. <laughs> Tell me why. Mate, I can't. I would not have. I, I thought you were going to say to me, oh, I actually was there and I'll stick it up for you. It was Rod McQueen that really drove the, yeah. the stake through the heart. Like, that Rod McQueen uh, bike's off you. I backed you. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll aim up, say it was me. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs>
Uh, I've certainly caught enough, catching enough throws. On top of that ladder, I remember uh, training yeah. there at uh, Icon Park at, uh, up in Carlton there, in our old training base of the Rebels, standing on top of that ladder in the pouring rain, catching... Was it, was catching, it as cold as this? <laughs> it's pretty cold. I'll tell you what, this reminds me of Ireland, actually, a lot down there, yeah, the right. weather and the, the coastline, and obviously that's where we played all our pool matches in 1999. Uh, yeah, it sort of brings back those memories. And one memory I will always stay to me, mate, is um, you winning that 99 World Cup. The one that's etched in my brain about you is they call you the Lab Rat. <laughs> and I want to know, there's all different reasons why. Why do they call you Lab Rat? Well, I always say to people that you've got to earn the right. To, to call you Lab Rat. Am I allowed to call you Lab Rat? Oh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you have. You've earned that right. But, um, you know, I'd rather just keep a bit of mystery around the, the, <laughs> the origins of of that, of I'll, that I'll go on record and tell you. It's because you sampled every supplement on the planet. You'd come into your bathroom. I'd get there. I think what I, I, between your PlayStation games all lined up, you'd have Cretan, you'd have Xbox HMP, on, oh, on, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you sampled it all, and it obviously worked, mate. Um, <laughs> and, uh, look, we'll, uh, we'll continue on this trip. Yeah. Uh, and, mate, what do I love about whether it's drinking Yenders or, or coffee and just catching up? It, it is good, and I, I think it's a gentle reminder that at the end of the day, mateship is far more important than a, yeah. a Wallaby win. Yeah. Uh, and what I've seen on this tour is that there is a very strong mateship at Clubland. Like mm -hmm. they're all, the parents are good mates, the kids yeah. are good mates. And we can sit here as mates now and, and have a yarn and have a yak. And although you didn't go on record really why you dropped me. <laughs> and, and, and another reason why we're at, you'd never woke me up on tour. You'd always make me <laughs> sleep in, you'd, you'd, I'd, I'd deal the halfway. That's made you the man you are today, that, that hard lesson of yeah, sleeping yeah, in yeah. and getting in trouble and being late. Yeah, right. Oh. And, no, and, and another, and, a, and yeah, thanks, mate. But the other thing, you're talking about mateship and you were talking before. Yeah. I was your, I, you were my first roomie hooker yeah. and the last roomie you had was Michael Foley. Yeah. yeah. And you don't talk to these guys for so long, but you can bump into them or you hear about them and it just brings that sort of sense of mateship back and, and all yeah. those teammates we have. But uh the show will go on. Um, are you going to go out for a swim? No, not a chance in hell I'll be getting into that into that water. It's so cold. Well, I tell you what, we, we might even do. We might even go up there. I think Wally's doing um, some calisthenics at the top of the hill. Uh, Wally, Wally's got to be careful around here. It's quite gee fit. Quite uh, treacherous in certain areas. <laughs> he runs every day, Wally. He's so fit. <laughs> um, but look, uh, classics chat. We we will do more of this, and it is about bringing you stories of. Back in the day, um, and your story, Labby, is that 99 World Cup, which you're holding there. And yep. You'll always have that. Yep. Uh, and I know you missed out in 2003. I missed out in 07. But uh, uh, we'll continue to bring some of these yarns. And we're, uh, we're so privileged and honoured to be not only Wallabies. And you know, I'm not a classic Wallaby. You're a Wallaby for life. And um, one thing you will always have in life is mateship. And uh, I'm glad i got a good mate here. So cheers to you. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Signing off from the 12 Apostles.